Greetings and blessed day to you once again, people of God, this is the Revelator once again. And hoping the grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you until the end of time. We meet once again in yet another exclusive presentation inside the Word of God and praying that all those that are certain, all those that are going through the most toughest, most hardest moments, you are being preserved by the Spirit of the Lord and being given the endurance, the ability to continue interceding, the ability to continue praying, the ability never to give up. Once again, we meet in yet another exclusive encounter inside the Word of God. And today, I want to take you into a presentation that is titled hosting the presence of God hosting the presence of God and I pray that throughout the whole presentation will be given the wisdom the understanding and the beneficence of the Holy Spirit earlier on I talked about the demon host I explained about it a demon that can enter inside one and it uses him as a host is that demon seeks to pursue his agendas its mission using that vessel and explain this is more than just a demonic possession but a level at which one becomes an advocate of the devil a level one at which one becomes a custodian of demons a level at which one is remote controlled by devils today i want to talk about hosting the presence of god but before i take you into the scripture passages i just want to briefly narrate how moses is called and he is called by a burning bush a bush that was burning but it was not being consumed and the scriptures say the angel of the lord spake from within that bush and when the angel of the lord started speaking from within that bush moses is drawn closer to the bush in desperation in place of being anxious he really wanted to know how that was possible not knowing that it was god that was now calling him and moses converses with the burning bush for quite a while as he is being assigned to go and deliver the children of israel who were being captivated in the land of Egypt, the same land where Moses had been raised in the palace as a prince. And this is the same land where Moses had to deliver them out of a very difficult, oppressive system, which was the system of Pharaoh. And the burning bush has to dispute with Moses for quite a while as Moses is being convinced, as Moses is being persuaded to go and announce the release of the children of Israel from the oppressive system, from the oppressive enslavement that they were subjected under Pharaoh. And God reaches the level of assigning Aaron as the spokesperson of Moses after Moses had proved that he was doubting the calling that he had been assigned after seeing the burning bush after throwing his staff and it became a serpent after being told to put his hand inside his bosom inside his 
diamond pocket and it came out as leprous. All those signs, there were signs that were performed by God through the same Moses. But it was so difficult to convince Moses to the level that the lack of confidence that was inside Moses caused God to end up assigning Aaron to become his spokesperson. His spokesperson. But in the process, God still remained principled as he is a devoted and principled God who did not decide to change the vessel that he wanted to use. He still remained principled that I'm going to use Moses despite his weaknesses, despite his fears, despite his doubts, despite his stammerings. And Moses is assigned as the host, as one that was hosting the presence of God. It's already clear as I elaborated and briefly narrated that Moses was not even prepared to take that assignment. He actually wanted to run away from that assignment that God was giving him. But God remained principled and he uses Moses. And Moses hosts the presence of God and performs many mighty miracles in the presence of Pharaoh and Egypt. Not because Moses was the perfect candidate, but because Moses was now chosen. When you are now chosen, no matter how imperfect you are, you become the host. And when you host the presence of God, God is going to do many mighty things using you. And as you host the presence of God, you host the significance of God, the relevance of God. You do many mighty things and God does many mighty things, some that you will not even be aware of. God can even heal many through you. God can even stretch out to many through you without even you having to reach those places. You are now beyond a vessel. You are now the remote, the remote control in God's hand. God is using you as a remote control. When you are now hosting the presence of God, you are now hosting the presence of God and the presence of God is now using you as a compass. The presence of God is now using you as a weapon. The presence of God is now using you as a mouthpiece. You are now being pushed forth by the motives and the agendas of God as a host. Moses then delivers the children of Israel, the children that had been oppressed in the land of Egypt. And as he delivers them out, God's particular word was, I want my people to worship me. There was no other agenda. And the promise that was there was, you'll deliver them into the land that is flowing with the milk and honey. This promise was genuine and it was also a prof a pro it was also a promise that was channeled towards driving them and motivating them when Moses would speak before them that they may know that surely the Lord was now prepared to deliver them out of poverty. Though it took several miracles for Moses to deliver them, but finally he crossed the Red Sea with those children of Israel that had been in bondage for a long time. And he took them into the desert. Now, when they reached the desert, there was a certain twist of events, events that Moses did not expect. Why? Because Moses simply thought that his assignment, his mission, was to deliver God's people into the land of Canaan. There are many 
surprising events, incidents that happened. And part of those incidents, they involve the rebellion of Korah and his men who wanted to rise against Moses. And they suffered the wrath. And the earth was opened up and it swallowed Korah. Not only those incidents happened in the wilderness, uh, the incidents of the snakes that started biting people because they were now disobedient. Up until Moses again had to plead with the Lord and the Lord told Moses to build a bronze serpent which would spare many and whoever would look up to that bronze serpent would get healed. Now, in some of the incidents and the events that happened in the wilderness, and there was a time when manna was no longer raining, when people had been promised that they are going to be filled, even by the Lord, while they were in the wilderness. And the men began to ask for flesh. And they began to complain about the manna that had rained. And they began to ask for flesh. They began to bother Moses a lot. And the pressure that was coming from the people was so too much. It was so too much to the level that Moses felt that he was now carrying the pattern of the people. The elders, the people, and the officers, they all pleaded. And Moses was forced to go back into the presence of God. And he said, if I found favor in thy sight, let me not see my wretchedness. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and the officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that you may stand there with them. And the Lord promised Moses that I'll come down and talk with you there. And I'll take of the spirit which is upon you, and I'll put it upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with you. And you bear it not alone as thyself. And you shall say unto the people, Sanctify yourselves against thee tomorrow, and you shall eat flesh, for you have wept in the ears of the Lord, who shall give us flesh. Now, I need you to understand something here. Moses is told that he has to gather the 70 elders and the officers that rule over the people. And Moses is promised by God that the same spirit of God, the same presence of God that he was carrying, the Lord God was going to descend upon him and distribute the spirit that was already upon Moses unto the 70 elders. What is happening here is that God has instructed Moses to choose these elders to pick up the 70 elders who were going to become the hosts of the presence of the spirit of the Lord that was already inside Moses. God was not going to dispatch his presence. Why? Because he had already chosen Moses. The one that is already hosting the presence of God is Moses. To the level that God is not promising Moses that I'm going to release another package from where i am here in the heavenly places but i'm going to come down there 
why because what i have already released unto you i'm not going to release it again god is not going unto you i'm not going to release it again god is not going to anoint several people when he has already dispensed his presence god is not in the business of going around anointing different preachers god is not in the business of going around activating different vessels so that his work can be accomplished if god has entrusted a certain personality and he has made that personality his host for the presence of god god is not going to take back his words god is not going to change his assignment just because they are people that have become stubborn just because they are people that have despised the one that has been assigned by god god tells moses that i'm going to come down there and when i come down there i'm going to come empty-handed i'm not going to dispatch the presence to these 70 elders but rather i'm going to come and pinch in the manner that i pinch salt and i will distribute the presence unto the 70 elders and they shall become temporary host significant vessels that shall be hosting the presence of god seeing that you have carried the burden of my assignment i want to relieve you temporary for a while and moses took the 70 elders and when he took the 70 elders they went and stood round about the tabernacle and the lord came down in a cloud and spake unto moses when the when the lord came down he, he spoke unto moses he did not speak unto the 70 elders why because the one that is hosting the presence of god is moses not the 70 elders can you imagine how god is so principled to the level that even when he wants to distribute the same spirit that is inside moses he does not come down and he starts talking to all the 70 elders and they all start hearing the voice of god no he comes back and begins conversing with the moses why is the 70 elders are there and they cannot hear that moses is talking to god and the lord came down in a cloud and spake unto moses and took the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders and it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them they prophesied and it did not cease but there remained two men in the camp the name of the one that was eldered and the other name was murdered and the spirit rested also upon them and they were of them that were written the fact that they were written by moses hand, they began to prophesy while they were in the tents elders and that were not part of the elders that were around the tabernacle they remained behind but still they became hosts for the presence of god they were now hosting the presence of god by reason that the one that was hosting the presence of god full time had written their names if one that is hosting the presence of god has been chosen by god and has been honored by god whoever is going to write it down whoever is going to mention whoever is going to choose that the spirit of the lord rests upon him it shall be upon and according to his word i've seen so many times that if there are specific disciples that have been chosen to ascend by god all that i need to do is locate a destination where i want these disciples to ascend and they ascend remember the 72 elders had already been prescribed by god so god knows those that he has chosen already those that he has called already those that he has elected already 
all that Moses had to do was to write down the names of those elders. In the ascension room, those that have been selected already to ascend, it does not matter who they are. But the fact that they have been chosen, all that is needed is that the revelator has to activate them, has to ascend them to certain greater heights, has to ascend them to certain destinations of their life, has to ascend them to certain dimensions and realms of the spirit. And they also host the presence of the ascension dimension, not because they are ascension beings, no, but because they are now hosting the same spirit and the same presence of God in the ascension room. When the disciples gathered in the upper room, they were waiting for days to host the presence of God when the Holy Spirit would fall upon them. When, at one moment, Jesus sends 72, if not 70 disciples, who were not part of those 12. And if these 72 were signaled by the same 72 elders that Moses had elected, that were going to temporarily host the presence of God. And those 72 disciples, we don't hear about them in the New Testament. They had been elected by Jesus temporarily to host the presence of God, child of God. Today I've come in the presence of God, praying and pleading that you also become a host and you are seen in the presence of God. And you start hosting the presence of God for that particular assignment that you have been given by the Holy Spirit. As God chose certain custodians, certain elders, certain disciples, certain officers that were not qualified to become servants of God, but he qualified them to host the presence of God. He qualified them to be hosting the presence of God. And the likes of elders and Metat who remained at the tents, they were all prophesying. But their prophesying ceased eventually. Why? Because when you're hosting the presence of God and a man of God, who is the main host? You need to know what is causing you to host that presence it is because you are under a man of god that is hosting the presence of god permanently it is because you are under the one that is the main host if you are not the main host when you start hosting the presence of god don't forget who is causing you to ascend don't forget who is causing you to be endorsed by god don't forget that if god has chosen his main host you honor his word. I have disciples that have ascended. And after they have ascended, they meet the 24 elders. And they are told to go back and take instructions from the revelator. Disciples that have ascended to the second heaven, to the first heaven. Disciples that have ascended to places that are out of reach. Deeper dimensions and realms in the spirit. And when they descend back, they confessed that they saw the revelator there, yet I remained. And then it amazes many how I'm functioning in different places at the same time. It's because I am now hosting the presence of God. It is no longer about the revelator, but the presence of God. That is making it possible for me to be operating in different places at the same time. Child of God, I want to pray for you right now so that you become a host. And when you host the presence of God, you shall not forget who is the main host. And you shall not forget who is the God that has sent you to become that host. And when you start hosting, your humility, your humility in the presence of God shall be examined. And when you shall be found that you lack humility, you shall become ordinary again. I pray that you become a host in the presence of God in the name of Jesus.